Hey guys, so a couple of days ago I put out a video outlining my first impressions of Fedora 25 with the default GNOME desktop environment and I was very 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 impressed with it and also kudos to Fedora for being the first major distribution to ship with Wayland as standard. It was looking um, at one point where 2016 was going to see no uh, major Linux distribution ship with Wayland as standard and now we've got Fedora which means that it's just, you know, it's, 2016 was, was going to look like another year where it was going to get pushed back, but it's not. It actually happened, which is great. Now, many of you are probably well aware that the GNOME 3 desktop environment is, is one that uses a significant amount of system resources, as does KDE, or Plasma as it's now known. And I've always, you know, like if you can run GNOME, you can run KDE and vice versa. And, and maybe with KDE, because it's so customizable, uh, you could probably, you know, trim the fat to the point where KDE is reasonably lightweight. But to be honest, neither of those desktop environments can really hold a candle to XFCE, which is my go-to desktop environment for somewhat legacy machines. It's not the lightest desktop environment out there, but it has that nice balance of customizability, features, and speed. Uh, it also looks pretty nice as well. I know a lot of people say, oh no, it looks like it's a desktop from the 90s because, you know, it is pretty old. But, you know, with, with decent theming and, you know, with the settings in the compositing, um, you know, system tweaks, you can get it to look really quite nice. So, and, and to be honest, most desktops can be made to look quite nice if you're willing to just put in a little bit of customization. And, you know, let's keep it real, most people don't really care that much, all right? Um, one of the reasons we care is because we like Linux, you know, like Linux has always been, and Linux distributions have always been seen as the more technical of the operating systems. And when, you know, if you've got a nice polished, cleaned up desktop environment, it makes it look a little bit more user friendly, a little bit more approachable. So it's that kind of, you know, psychological element where it really kind of uh, matters, I guess, uh, and, and the first impressions element. Fedora have always been quite good at this. They've actually kept, even though they've, they've been a distribution that runs bleeding edge software, or at least not necessarily bleeding edge, cutting edge software, like reasonably new software, it's still managed to keep it reasonably polished and reason, reasonably trimmed. But there have been costs to that. There's less software in the repositories and so forth. So. I, for the last couple of days now, um, since that last review, have been playing around with the XFCE community respin of Fedora. There are some changes I'm going to talk about today, but this is pretty good. I'm actually quite happy with it. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the changes. Shall I bring up the... Yeah. So there's not really too much to say here in the release notes. Um... These are just the release notes. Yeah, these are the release notes. These are the generic Fedora 25 release notes um, that came with this distribution. So I don't think they've uh, applied anything specific to XFCE here. They say it ships with Firefox 49, but if you look at the About Firefox page, it's, it's been updated to 50 by now. So that's pretty good. Firefox 50 uh, is, 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 uh, is where it should be at. That's where I'd expect Fedora to be right about now. So there's not too much here. It's also important to bear in mind that Fedora tends to be a little bit more strict when it comes to free software that it ships with. It tends to be a little bit more strict, whereas Ubuntu will, will bundle a lot more um, proprietary stuff into the repositories. Fedora tend to, for the most part, keep a pretty tight ship when it comes to the free software principles, which is something I've always quite liked about it. As a result of that, you've often had to bring in RPM Fusion, which is a third party repository, which gives you, you know, media codecs and uh, extended pieces of software and proprietary software as well. I decided not to actually put RPM Fusion on this um, trial distribution uh, just to see what it's like to not use it, what it's like to see, to see vanilla, well, not necessarily vanilla uh, Fedora, but a Fedora without third-party software. Because whenever you install third-party software, it always does... Uh, it risks stability and it risks security a little bit, a little bit. Obviously, it depends on the software, depends on the repository. RPM Fusion, of course, is you know there there are as I understand it, um, you know like people who work on Fedora also working on RPM Fusion in their spare time and so forth. So RPM Fusion is certainly one of the better third party one of the best third party repositories out there. But still, you know it, it's a simple principle to live by that um, if you can get by with your distribution's stock software. Uh, it's probably best to do that. So what are some of the things that I tried out with it? Well, the biggest difference that I did notice and I didn't necessarily like was that it didn't come with the standard GNOME Software Center. I actually had to install it separately. So this is the default standard GNOME Software Center, probably one of the best software centers that comes with, with Linux, or at least is available uh, cross-platform. Um, and it was just a matter of installing it. I just typed sudo dnf gnome dash no, sudo dnf install 
gnome dash software i think was the command that i used so it's very very simple and it comes uh you know just uh installed and works right out of the box so as you would expect or not necessarily out of the box but it installed it um, with zero problems I've installed some software through it um, you can update software through it but of course software is up to date so that's not too bad but it would be nice to see something like that included by default but with community respins you can often accept uh, like a slightly different philosophy it might you know community respins are often designed for people more entrenched in the distribution itself or more entrenched in uh, software choices and so forth whereas you know with the flagship distribution it makes the standard choices for you and it gives you you know your base flagship operating system so you know different respins can have different philosophies on what kind of software they'd like to include but it was easy enough to install so what did it come with it came with something called yum extender which is rather similar to synoptic package manager uh, octopi uh, the one that comes with manjaro and the one that you know you know there's, there's an antergos one you know these package managers they all kind of look very similar and uh, and this is it now I didn't upgrade using this. I actually, for the most part, um, kind of actually gave up on Yum Extender and just went straight to the command line uh, because it it's not a bad piece of software, but it just doesn't be I don't know. It just doesn't seem to beat the command line if you ask me, and it's not user friendly enough that I would recommend it to newcomers. So it's like it's kind of in that bastard zone, isn't it? Where it's it's too simple for advanced users and it's too advanced for for for, for newcomers or for, for casual users as well for people that just don't can't be asked to get into it and you know of course that's their prerogative to do um, to take that approach uh what else did i test i tested all right i've got scribus down here and I, I used i installed scribus i installed it through the gnome software center so here uh, and that worked quite well i'll actually just close this uh, and that worked flawlessly uh, it all installed out for, flawlessly and i can go down to about qt so it's built against Qt version 4.8.7. Works fine, and the theming is fine. So, so the um, the Qt, or at least the Qt4 themes, work quite nicely. Uh, and it seems that they've taken a similar quality assurance approach to um, to the flagship distribution. So there's that. So that's pretty good. I got to say, um, there's not too much more to say about it. I can talk a little bit about the default bundled software, which is uh, Abbey Word Clause Mail numeric so it comes with the the is it the g tools i think they're called which is like the the gtk built alternative to like LibreOffice and uh caligra is it or caldera or something like that that's the the, the qt equivalent they're all right for basic use but considering that abby word last time i checked can't open docx files that's pretty pretty mm, that's a pretty bad thing um i can actually check now if i wanted to um and I, yeah, I, I mean, I probably would have gone more closer with the Ubuntu stuff. Oh, that doesn't look great. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. Actually, that's a pretty nasty bug we've hit across there. So, um, so that is not good. If we go to new. Ah, okay. It's just a little bit of a rendering issue there by the looks of it. Okay. But um, if you uh, do open... Um, and I don't think you can see any dot docxes down here. And I've got to admit, like problems like this with Abbey Word, they're not like I've I've had problems with this um, similar to this in other distributions as well. So I've got to say, just Abbey Word probably not the default um, manager I'd include. I'd include LibreOffice, and there are issues with LibreOffice. Like a lot of people nowadays are just going to go straight to Google Docs or. Um, Outlook uh, 365 because a lot of people just don't use word processing. You know they'll they'll use it like three times a year and and, and it's LibreOffice is a rather large package to have for something you only use th uh, three times a year. And then on the other hand, if Abbey Word is, I mean it has been struggling to keep up with other uh, you know Office suites and it, you know I've had you know it is kind of not exactly the most it's not exactly the least buggy piece of software available even though it's you know, not that advanced uh, word processor. Yeah, like I say, I probably would have just bitten the bullet of, and included LibreOffice there because it, it doesn't seem necessarily like this this XFCE version of Fedora seems to be explicitly designed for lightweight use. There's a few software choices here, but they've included uh, Firefox, which is not a lightweight um, browser. 
of course, it sometimes can be considered a bit of a fallacy to focus so much on how lightweight your desktop is because the vast majority of resources are going to be taken up by the software that runs on top of it. So, um, you know, you can have a lightweight desktop, desktop nice hunky-dory, but if you're running something like Firefox or Chrome or Chromium on top of it, then you've, you've almost lost the difference in, in that regard. Um, but nevertheless, I've got to say, for the most part, really good... Um, distribution it's uh, I obviously look after a number of computers for friends and family and associates and um, with Ubuntu these days not being as great as it should be I have been looking for other distributions that um, that can sort of take its place and Fedora is one of them but the six month release cycle is just a little bit too quick however I have checked that the end of life of most Fedora distributions tends to be over a year so you can update, uh, you know, a year at a time, it seems, for the most part, and still have the security coverage. So it's certainly a contender. This this XFCE, it might require a little bit of setting up. And by setting up, I just mean installing software. That's the the big issue with this is the software that comes bundled with it. Um, but it comes with Transmission, Pigeon, Firefox, Claws Mail. Like, these are all reasonably pretty all right choices. Pro Media Player, I would have gone with MPV myself comes with the pulse audio volume control this is great because this means if you've got like a complicated me well not even a complicated media setup but if you've got usb cards and the like this handles them really quite nicely so that's about it really there's not too much to say that isn't covered in the fedora 25 uh, first impressions review um it's worth checking out if you're looking for something that's a little bit more traditional a little bit more um well, like XFCE, if you want XFCE on the Fedora, with the power of Fedora behind it, this is this is a good choice. This is a good choice if you can uh, work past the default software selection, which you know, let's face it, you can. Um, and of, of you know, no distribution is going to be perfect on that front anyway. Uh, so that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. Um, definitely worth checking out. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.